Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is Transformers Studio Series 86, Null. Now, Null comes to me thanks to the generosity of channel member Jason Wade Cox. Jason, thank you. I have been searching all over for this guy can't find him anywhere, and am eternally grateful for you hooking me up. So thank you, thank you once again. So let's take a quick look at Null in the packaging here. As you can see, you've got Null in robot mode right behind the window box. And as you can tell, you get a little Null with a lot of box. You also see the Sharkticon head right there. So I do believe there's going to be some assembly required for this figure. You got some fantastic box art right there. Transformers Studio Series 86, Transformers the movie. This side of the box, you got a close up of Null's face. Back of the packaging, you've got Null in Sharkticon mode and robot mode. And this side of the box, you have more of that great artwork. Now, this artwork leads me to a question for you guys. Look here at the close up view. See how Null has teeth? In a Facebook group recently, there was an argument on why Transformers have to have teeth. They, some people thought it was stupid. Some people, like me, I think it's pretty cool. So you've got Null right there with some teeth, and I know for a fact in the Generation 1 cartoon, they didn't have teeth, but in the comic series, they always were drawn with teeth. So in the comment section below, what's your thought on Transformers with teeth? Me, personally, I think it adds to the character. So enough of my dental questions. Let's go ahead and take a look at this toothy transformer. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now, once you get Null all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions that, as usual, are very well illustrated and easy to follow. He also comes with this gray blaster, his tail slash mace weapon, and these two sections right here that you need to attach to the figure to make him complete. He's got a shark fin and the upper half of Sharkticon mode or his back. So first thing we'll do, let's take the shark fin and just plug this in to the back of the figure and right here he's got this little section right there that you just slide into this groove on his back so let's see just bring this up like so and just slide that right in make sure you get it lined up nice tight fit come on there we go so now that's in place just bring that section right back down and there you have Null all assembled. And of course, he has this background display that if you have the room on your display, you can make him look like he's in the pit of judgment. But unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to display all of that. So now let's take a closer look at Null himself. Now my first impressions with Null, once I got him out of the packaging and assembled was wow. This guy looks dead on to his appearance in Transformers the movie. Taking a closer look at the figure, look at the sculpted detailing on this guy. 
I mean, Hasbro has been killing it with this Studio Series 86 line. This looks so good, especially here on the main body. I love that. He also has a fairly decent amount of paint applications that look really good. Starting off here, of course, you can see the green eyes for shark mode, which we'll go in more later on. But he's got the nice silver teeth there on top and along the bottom here. Now, the original Generation 1 Gnaw had these great chrome teeth that that figure was known for. I kind of wish these were chrome, but you know, that silver does not look bad at all. Taking a closer look at the head sculpt here, he does have a red rectangle on the crest, a white face with yellow-green eyes. He's got three red dots, or three red squares, rather, right there on the lip, and a little section right there that's also yellow-green. He's got these little side horns. They're painted blue, and pretty much that's it for paint applications aside from the yellow belt buckle. But I still cannot get over the amount of sculpted detailing on this guy. He just looks so cool. Now, articulation for Nall, the head is on a ball joint. It can look up, it can look down, it can do a complete 360, but mine is really, really tight. I mean, I can pretty much just turn that way. Oh, there we go. But it's kind of hard to turn because you have to get inside the jaws of the shark. The arms can do a complete 360. They can go out, they can go in, there is a rotation there at the shoulder, there is a bicep bend, no wrist articulation, no waist articulation, legs can go out, they can go in, and they seem to be a little bit spring-loaded just because of these sculptings. If you bring the leg out, you just barely touch it, and it just kind of snaps back into place. You can also go forward, they can go back, there is a knee bend, and ankle tilt also there is a thigh rotation now you get a little extra bend right here but that's due to transformation so all in all the robot mode looks fantastic now let's bring in his weapons and the first one we'll look at is his blaster and this blaster is spot on to the g1 toy blaster i mean check that out i love the attention to detail these modern figures have to their G1 counterparts. So the blaster, of course, can fit in Nall's hand, just like so. And then we'll bring in the tail mace right here. Lots of great details on this as well, though it is a little bit hollow up there in the tip for my preferences, but it still doesn't look bad. It's hinged right there at the base, and that is the only spot where there's a hinge. They could have added a little bit more, but oh well. Now, when you go to put the tail mace in Nall's hand, make sure these little spikes, the spines, are facing forward because they're not going to fit into his hand because of this little section right here if you try it the other way. So there you have Nall, all armed and ready for battle. Now, I thought that if you didn't want to use the tail mace that you could take the shark fin and use it as a weapon, but... That is not a five millimeter peg. You cannot get that peg to fit in Nall's hand. So taking the tail mace, it is slightly larger. So see how that freely spins? So that's just gonna stay in his back. I mean, the only thing you can really do with that is rotate it around. Now you can fit Nall's tail in Studio Series 86 Cup's hand so he can give Nall a proper beat down just like he did in Transformers the movie. Now let's get Nall transformed into shark mode or beast mode. And the first thing you're going to do is remove the weaponry, the gun and the mace, which we'll use later on. Now what you're going to do is go ahead and take the back of the figure and you're just going to pull everything up like so. And then take this section right here and pull up. So you've got this going on. And this is really cool. You're going to take this whole assembly right here and spin it around. I love that. I just think that's really neat. So now, turn Nall over, and you see these little pegs right here. They're going to line up to these holes on Nall's feet. So you're just going to take the leg and bend all the way up and over and peg into those holes. So there you have one. Turn this around so you guys can see. And 
the other. So those peg in nice. Now you're gonna just take this section here, flip up and over, and right there, there's a little slot that's gonna match up to that tab. Just peg those together. It's a nice tight fit. And there you go. I think I've really lucked out. I've seen a few different videos where that does not stay pegged in. Mine does, no problem. Now you're gonna take Nall's head and just push it as far down as you can and then bring the jaw up and the upper jaw, well, I guess that moves. So you can go anywhere you want with that. So that'll stay there, move this up. So this whole section can move around. Go ahead and swing the little shark decon arms forward bring the legs up, bend back. And now if you haven't done it, flip the fists in. So there you're almost done. Take the mace tail and make sure the little spines now are facing up. Plug that in and there you have Gnaw in beast mode. In beast mode, Gnaw looks pretty good. He's not as cartoon accurate in this mode as he was in robot mode but still Hasbro nails it. Now, this version of Null is a little bit more streamlined than some of the other figures we got because his body is not as round. But just like robot mode, tons and tons of great sculpted details. I love the looks of this figure. Great paint applications as well, especially there with the eyes. And I love how my ring light is making it look like he has pupils. That is sweet. Little red rectangle there between the eyes. The teeth, as I kind of went over earlier in robot mode, look fantastic in beast mode. Now, what's really cool, check out the sculpted detail up here inside the jaw. See how it looks like molded teeth? So it's kind of like a real shark. How they say a shark's teeth is like on a conveyor belt. You lose one, another just falls into place. And I think that makes a lot of sense with Gnaw here. More great paint applications right here with these little horns, though right there, they got a little sloppy. The paint is on the purple. Now, I do like how when you open up the jaws of Gnaw, the head of the robot looks like there's a saw blade or something. So he's eating bots and just grinding them up there on the inside. I dig it. But if you shut Gnaw's jaw, jaws all the way, the robot head does tend to pop out the same as if you open them all the way. So that's one nitpick right there with the head. Another nitpick of mine is the arms. I feel they're too close to the mouth. I wish the arms were positioned, say, right about here. They just kind of get in the way and don't really look right, right there hooked to the mouth the way it is. Plus, I wish they had more articulation. If they were on ball joints, that would be perfect. But they're just pinned in. They can do a complete 360, and there is an elbow bend. Now, there's lots of nice sculpted details on those arms, especially with the fingers. I mean, it's just, it's just a creepy looking butt. Now, right there, that hole there is so you can attach his blaster. So you hook the blaster to the side, so now you have Gnaw in shark mode or beast mode, all armed and ready for battle, but I'm really not a big fan of that look. So now let's compare the Studio Series 86 Gnaw with his Generation 1 counterpart. And as I said earlier, look at the chrome teeth on this guy. I wish he had chrome teeth, but I do like his eyes better than that one. And it's just amazing how far these toys have come over the years. Now, another thing I just now realized, I wish that Gnaw had the little antennas that stuck up like they did in the movie. Of course, the original G1 toy did not have that, but with 86 and their screen accuracy look, I think that would have been cool. Maybe some little pliable, soft plastic antennas sticking out, but oh well. Now, another thing I think that would be really cool if they had optional faces. Like in the movie, you could have a face where his teeth gets knocked out or another face that gets cut in half. So still, really cool little figure and I dig him. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers Studio Series 86 Null with Generation 1 Null 
the 2013 Shardicon exclusive Land Shark, Titan's Return Null, and Cyberverse Null. Transformers Studio Series 86 Null is a great Transformers toy. I love this little guy. He's got a great robot mode, fun transformation, great beast mode, and I just love the Generation 1 throwbacks. And even though I did have a couple of complaints with him, they're no biggie and really don't detract from the enjoyment of this figure whatsoever. So there you go, guys. Transformers Studio Series 86. Null. So, does a Transformers Studio Series 86 Null belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a fun Transformers toy. He's got a great robot mode, great beast mode, fun transformation, just all around a great little figure. Now, I do have a couple minor nitpicks with the beast mode, but that's nothing that can't be overlooked because still the engineering that Hasbro put into this figure compared to, say, the 86 version is outstanding. And this is one of the best Sharktacons that we've got in a long time. So, yeah, you see this guy on the shelf, pick him up. You are not going to be disappointed. I just hope Hasbro makes enough of these guys because I foresee a lot of people buying multiples so they can army build. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I also have a Patreon page. And two weeks from now, we will be at TFCon, and I cannot wait. I hope to meet some of you guys there. It, it's going to be a blast. Once again, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!